Welcome back to the broadcast. Lisa and I are sitting down with Bill Dindy from Elite Financial Management to break down the steps that it takes to financially get your kid into college. We are mm -hmm. both ready and uh, willing to learn as much as we can. Lisa's got two in college. Uh, I've got one that's going into college. Help! Oh, I know it. <laughs> well, one of the first things we should be doing, like right now, yes. is that FAFSA. Filling the out free the application for federal student aid. And this is filling out oh. the FAFSA for the fall semester of 2014. You got it. Right. And a lot of people are going to wait until after their taxes are done in April to start attacking this because it's a lot easier mm -hmm. when you take things right off the tax return. But the problem with that is a lot of aid is based on first come first serve and those who get started earlier have a better chance. Right. So use the paycheck stubs, use last year's tax returns, do the best you can with what you've got. Use your okay. bank statements for your interest expense. You can always change it. You can augment it. You can fix it later. But for now, get it done. Fill it out now. Fill okay. it out because now there's, because there's a point in time where it's too early to do it. It's not too early to do it now. Today is the day we can do it now. Okay. All right, good. Start in January so we good. can do it. Okay, and you have to do that. Fill out the fast I know. I was like, well, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> What's fast by? Okay. And it's a whole world Apparently of language we should learn today. if yeah. we want to get the most aid for our children. And then also, yes. it's important to know that once you complete that, it's not just for the federal aid. A lot of schools are going to give aid based on how your numbers came out on that form. Okay. And they're going to count money in the student's name as being primarily available for education. Right. But money in the parent's name is not as available, but somewhat available. Yet they don't count your retirement assets at all, which means that money in a 401k, money in IRAs, doesn't work against you. Mm -hmm. But money's sitting in your child's... You, uh, UGMA account or UTMA account or you decided it would be a good idea to put money in the child's name, that counts big time against you. Oh, really? So for a lot of folks, it's moving the money, making sure it's in the parent's name, not the child's name, or right, right, right. making sure that we have it in the retirement accounts or going out and getting accounts that won't count against you. And there are other things you can do as well. Okay. Well, I, I just had a quick question. So when you're filling out the FAFSA to get this, this aid for your child, like in my situation, Brian and I are divorced. So is it more beneficial for Spencer, my son, for me to fill out the FAFSA if I make less money than Dad does or for Dad to do it in his name? Or Good what? question. It's important to have the correct parent fill it out. Now, their definition of correct parent is the one that you <laughs> spend the, the most least. time. No, but that's <laughs> yes. the right answer. You want the parent that makes the least to be the one that spends six months about, with the child. Perfect. But that's how you want it to work out. Okay. okay. And in addition, uh, they're thinking them out. Like if you have debt, they don't, get, you don't get to deduct your debt. So if you've got a credit card bill standing out here at $25,000 and you've got $25,000 sitting in the bank account, well, that's going to work against you. Take your twenty-five thousand bank account, pay off the credit card debt before you do the forms, and you don't have that extra money showing up as being available. Right. Okay. Um, those types of steps make sense. And then, if you're going to have to take money out of a maybe a retirement plan to fund the children's education, mm -hmm. you have to fill out this form every year along the way. Mm -hmm. I see. Don't do a withdrawal, which ends up looking like you made extra income for the year, and you don't want to have too much income. Mm -hmm. Do a loan against the 401k. Now what about scholarships because we're not, we haven't even gotten to that yet. Scholarships oftentimes go unawarded because they were not applied for. Right. And I see a lot of people who end up getting a student loan uh, package, they, they get their federal package put together and on that you get things like the plus loan for the parent. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a loan. You're going to have to pay it back one right. day. I know you got the benefits and it's not that big. But and you can defer it and all that, but it, you still got to pay it back. But free money's better. Mm -hmm. Scholarships is better. Grants okay. is better. Okay. I'm sorry. I need to go back to school. I'll get some grammar. <laughs> but these things are the better options for us that many times students take the short way out. They just barely get through the forms. Right. They end up with a lot of loans. They ignore. And then be aware of the packages. Sometimes they put on the package the things like work study programs, working at school, and the students don't want to take advantage of those, or they miss the opportunities to get the scholarships because they didn't apply to them. Each school is going to have its own set That's of Is there a favorite you. website to apply? Where do we go for these grants and scholarships? No, the FAFSA form, the government website's great, and outside websites, a ton of places have a lot of help on how do you fill out that form. 
Because okay. that form is a monster. You've done it a couple yeah, yeah. times. It's a, <laughs> right. and there are people who look at it and say, I'm not going to do it because it's too much work, but you got to do it. Yeah. But I've seen even little sock hand puppets showing people how to fill out that form. Okay. So All right. you can make it somewhat entertaining. <laughs> That's readily available. Scholarships, do searches for scholarships, talk to the schools about scholarships. And then once you get into a school, look for scholarships that are available for ask you the that. students of those particular colleges. Okay, so in our case for Texas Tech, we would go on the website and then look and see what's available there. That's right. And okay. then talk to the people at Texas Tech. At SMU, same thing. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Good Bill. Good advice. Yes, Thank great you. information. All right, check out our website at thebroadcasttv.com for a link to Bill Dindy's tips and his website. All right, next, we've got, we're going to tackle your financial health in the new year. Let's talk about getting your entire family unit on track. Dr. Fab is back with us next to talk about that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.